everyone and welcome back to Youth Online. We are so excited for today because we're actually starting a new series. So this is going to be really special. I hope that you're ready for us. If you're joining us for the first time, maybe this is the first time ever watching a stream. Why don't you send us a WhatsApp to 082-736-9668. We'd love to connect with you, get you involved in one of our fam groups, get you involved in our family. You are already family. So why don't you let us know and we'll get you connected straight away. Another special welcome to everyone at Bridgeport Alfred. We love you, we miss you. Jan Alberton, you are part of the family. This is all Bridge, so we can't wait to see. I know some of you are joining us for the holidays, so we're excited to see you and hopefully some of us will go join you down there in Port Alfred as well so we're excited but we're excited for today before we start before we go any further let me just start off with prayer father we're so grateful for today we we're so grateful for this message we pray that you would change us that you'd, you'd connect with us that wherever we are wherever anybody's watching this that holy spirit you'd, your presence would be felt and that we'll take something away from this that will change us and move us like never before in jesus name amen everyone said amen so the the new series we're starting is called more like jesus very simple, there's no bells, whistles, no, no golden ribbon. It's just more like Jesus. Why? Because we wanna be more like Jesus. As a generation, we wanna we strive to be more like Jesus. As a nation, we should strive to be more like Jesus. If you have made a decision to follow Jesus, that means you've committed your life to Him. That means that you should strive to be more like Jesus. And it's not that we want to be perfect or, or that we do become perfect. It's that we, every one of us are on this journey of becoming more like Jesus. Simple, just like that. And today we're going to be speaking about living like Jesus or we, part one is live like Jesus. And the part two, we're going to look at love like Jesus and part three, lead like Jesus. So we want to all become more like Jesus. That's the heart behind it. We're going to say this over and over again. This is the main point for the entire series. We want to model Jesus and teach others to do the same. If you've ever heard of the word discipleship or disciple, this is what the heart behind it is. That Jesus set this example for us all those years ago when he lived. He set the, the example of how we should live. So that's why we want to model Jesus, copy his life basically, and teach others to do the same. So it's not just about us, but it's about other people as well. We're a generation that cares about others. That's why we're so passionate about fam groups because that's an area where we're able to connect with each other and teach others to do the same. So we wanna love like Jesus, we wanna lead like Jesus, but specifically today, we wanna live like Jesus. And when I think about being more like someone, the first thing that pops to mind are role models. Now, I don't know if, if role models is still a thing, but when I was in school not too long ago, but long enough, we used to do speeches on role models. And I don't know about you, but speeches for me was a time when I was anxious, I would start sweating, I would be stressing, I would rewrite it and write it over and write it word for word and have those little cue cards. I don't know if you ever had that, but it was one of the things that stressed me out. And when they say role models, you, you have to do a speech on a role model. Now, most of the time, people would have a similar role model. Back when I was in school, most people would choose Nelson Mandela. Like 20 out of the 30 people would have Nelson Mandela as a role model. And he's a great role model, so I understand why. But when you hear the same role model 20 times, you can imagine what that sounds like. So for me, I, I used to choose either my mom or my dad. And then it was like, which one do you choose? So when I, when I, when I told them that I have the speech to do and I have to do it on a role model, so I'm going to do it on one of you. And then it's like, okay, so who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? And then my mom would be like, well, do you want to eat food? And I was like, yes, I want to eat food. Well, then I'm your role model. My dad would be like, well, do you want to live to school? And I said, yes, I want to live to school. Well, then I'm the role model. So it was... Ah, it was just loads of jokes and stuff. But at the end of the day, we had to choose a role model. I actually heard recently that you guys do unprepared speeches. That is insane. How do you do that? I think we need to pray for you just for that. Teachers, if you're watching this, please, no more unprepared speeches. Please, come on, save us. But speeches are interesting and role models specifically. And I think one of the most interesting th thing about a role model is that you want to live like that person. So you start thinking like them, you start listening to the things they would listen to, start dressing like them, you start acting, start speaking like them. All of those things are after role models. Now, most of the time, or, or many times, we choose celebrities as role models as well. So if it's not your parents, it's not Nelson Mandela, maybe it's a celebrity, maybe it's a singer or a rapper or a or dancer or an actor, actress, one of those. And I know, ah, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna share, I'm gonna be vulnerable with you, I'm gonna share something with you, and I hope this is a safe space that you won't be laughing at me right now. And I hope you know this person. This celebrity was a guy by the name of Neo. 
And he was, oh, I love this guy. I wanted to be the white Neo. I just wanted to be, I wanted to have the same hats. He used to wear these cool hats. He had these cool dance moves. I wanted to do that. The way he, he sang, I wanted to sing. And I can't sing, so that didn't really help. So at least I could dance and I used to wear the hats. He was even bold. I, I wanted to cut my hair as well. But I wanted to literally copy my life after Neo. Now, I don't know what kind of morals he had. I didn't know him as a person. I mean, I had him on speed dial, but other than that, no, I'm joking. I didn't have him on speed dial. Imagine that. But other than what I saw on social media, for example, or what, what I saw in his songs or, or in his dancing, I didn't really know him, but I wanted to copy my life after him. So I'm not saying that, that having a celebrity as a role model is a bad thing, but is it the best thing? The problem is people are imperfect. I will let you down. Other people will let you down. Why? Because not one of us are perfect. Every one of us get it wrong. So if there's a celebrity that you really like and they, they start making decisions that go against what you believe, is that the best role model for you? What if they start listening or, or make songs that, that literally speak against the things that you really stand for and believe? Then your role model has kind of shifted, hasn't it? So I think it's very dangerous that we take a celebrity's word for gold because the danger in that is that we start to change and to alter what we believe based on what our role models believe. And that's a dangerous space. So that's why we want to be more like Jesus because, you know, he set this perfect example for us. I'd like to walk like he did and speak like he did, think like he did, do the things he did. And those are the things we can, we can admire role models, but don't live your life after them. Don't copy your life after them. We want to model Jesus and teach others to do the same. Jesus is this perfect example for us. So why do we want to go copy someone else when we have the perfect example already? And that's why the, these two verses in 1 John and the second one in John, these are really the, the verses of the series. 1 John 2, 6. Those who say they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. How incredible is that? That we want to be more like Jesus, right? So that means if you live in God, you've made a decision to follow Jesus, live your life like Jesus did. Simple as that. Now, easier said than done. Yes, we do mess up. We still trip up. But let's try to live our lives like Jesus did. John 14 verse 12. This blows me away. I hope you're ready for it because I wasn't. So John 14, 12. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing. and Watch this. They will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. It's so incredible that what Jesus is saying that you're going to be doing the things that I'm already doing. Can you imagine that? That we're going to do the same things that, that Jesus has already been doing. But even more than that, you're going to do even greater things. Why? Because Jesus lived these 33 years, this, this perfect life that, that we can model our lives after. And he's saying we're going to do even greater things. Did you know that only three of those years were years spent when he went around spreading the gospel or the good news as we would know it, the, the, spreading the, the good word of God and who he is and why he came and all of those things. He only spent three of those 33 years. So for three years, he did all of that. So he's saying, you're going to do that and greater. I'm excited because I know this generation has something that they, they, they can stand for. They have something to copy, something to, to, to take to the world, take to our nation, take to the generations, actually. We can be examples for people younger than us, but also for people older than us. That's why Jesus is saying all these things. So I want to know, you know, if I want to be more like Jesus, how do I do that? Well, we look at the life that he lived. What did he do? What did he say? How did he behave? What were the characteristics? Then maybe we can start figuring out what, what, what kind of thought patterns Jesus had. Most of them were against what people believe even now. When, when Jesus says we must be generous, the world is saying you must hold everything to yourself. That's just one example of the things that he, it was countercultural. Just because everyone else is doing it doesn't mean we should do it. If everyone else is doing it, let's stop and ask, is this what Jesus would want me to do? Is this what Jesus did? You know, there's this great book. It's called the Bible. It's actually an autobiography. It's a, it's a book written about God, by God, but for us. So when, when we read that, we start getting equipped and start being prepared. Do you know that Jesus walked the earth for real? Not this fantasy, this fiction, this story. It was history. It's part of history. Now, I won't go into all of the evidence, but at the end of the day, he walked. He thought like we did. He dressed like, well, maybe he dressed like some of us did. 
I, I reckon he had different types of robes. And I feel like he would wear pastel robes. That's just the vibe I, I think he did. And not all of us wear robes, no, but we wear clothes. He wore clothes like we did. He did things that we did. Do you know another interesting fact is that Jesus was actually a common first century name. There were loads of Jesuses running around. Only the one that did what he did, but with that name. It wasn't this special name. He didn't come out and say, here I am. He came humbly. It would be like a Josh, for example. I'm sure you know loads of Joshes. Josh is a common name. So imagine Jesus at that time said, I'm the Messiah, I'm the Savior. Well, if a Josh said that today, then maybe I'd be like, oh, are you sure, Josh? And I think that's why people responded the way they did. Another interesting thing is that Jesus' surname is not Christ. It's not Jesus' surname, Christ, when he fills in those forms. That's not how it is. Christ actually, it's, it's Greek for Christos, which means anointed one. That was his role. He was anointed for what he did. So we, we're going to look at a, a few things that Jesus did. What did his life comprise of? And that's just going to frame this entire series of being more like Jesus. So let's look at, look at his life. And we say, all right, I want to be more like Jesus. So the first thing, he was born. Duh, obvious, right? But the way he was born is important. Luke 2, verse 6 to 7. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. This is baby Jesus now. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for him. You know what's so interesting is that Jesus is the king. He's the creator of the universe. He's, he knows every one of us personally. But the way he was born is not like a, a king was born. He was born in a manger with probably animals around. Some theologians believe that it was even in a cave. That, is that the way a king is born? He was born humbly because he wanted to come into this world just like one of us. Not higher than anyone, not lower than anyone, but just like us. Because he can relate to every one of us. That's why we say we want to model Jesus and teach others to do the same. Be humble. Can I encourage you? Be humble. Guys, especially guys in the South. If you're watching us, you live in the South. Yes, this is for you. It's for everyone, but especially you. Be humble. There's a fine line between arrogance and confidence. Confidence, you know your weaknesses. And despite my weaknesses, hey, Jesus still equips me to go forward. So he was born humbly, right? The second thing, he was baptized. This is something we stand for. And this is actually one of our vision goals this year. We want to see 500 teenagers baptized. And that's so important because once you make a decision to follow Jesus, get baptized. Don't think about it. Don't ask. Do a poll on Instagram and see, should I get baptized? Should I not? No. It's, if you've made a decision to follow Jesus, it's a natural next step. Look at this. Luke 3, verse 21 to 22. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus were baptized too. Let me stop quickly. When all the people were being baptized, when all the people, which means all the people were being baptized, make a decision to follow Jesus, get baptized. All the people, right? Jesus was baptized too. If we want to be more like Jesus, Jesus was baptized. Maybe I should also be baptized. And as he was praying, heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. It's so incredible the life change that happens. If we allow Jesus to touch our life and when we get baptized, the Holy Spirit, to, his presence to really overflow in our lives. There's something incredibly special that happens when we say, you know, I want to show the world that I follow Jesus. And that's what baptism is. It's this decision that you're showing everyone that you've made. But more than that, it's allowing God to work in you like he's never done before. So get baptized. Don't wait for it. Make it happen. Speak to one of your leaders. Just make it happen. The third thing is his ministry. I spoke about it a bit earlier that he had these three years of ministry. And this is where he went around loving people, speaking about grace and truth and countercultural, going against what was happening. He forgave people and he, he spread good news. He spread love in a different way that we ever saw it. He was a servant leader. He washed people's feet. This king of the world washed people's feet. Isn't that incredible? I want to be more like Jesus, but I don't want to wash feet. That's a dangerous statement to make, right? Because if we want to be more like Jesus, we can't choose which parts we want. We, we, we need to live our lives just the way Jesus did. It doesn't need to be perfect, but just if I can do a little bit better. And he said these incredible things while he was here. And we'll speak about more about this in more of the other parts. But some of the things, these are known as the I am statements. These are incredible statements he made just to show us this is what he's like. This is who he is. One of the things he says, I'm the bread of life. And he's saying that maybe you eat and you feel full or you eat, and, but you still feel hungry. 
But at the end of the day, He's the bread of life, which means there's so much more than that, that if you feel like you're missing something in your life, that maybe you need to have some of the bread of life. Maybe you need to press into a relationship with Him. He says, I'm the light of the world. If you feel like you're in a dark space and you're missing something and you need something more, maybe you need some Jesus light in your life. And remember, He said, you'll do even greater things. When we make a decision to follow Jesus, the same light that Jesus has, we have. We can take light to other people. He says, I'm the gate. It's, it's, it's doors that are opened. It's, it's an entrance into something. Maybe you feel like doors keep closing everywhere you go. You can't get it through. Maybe you've been trying to study and it's just not going through. Maybe you need to allow Jesus to work through. He says, I'm the good shepherd. He protects and he cares and he looks after us and we, we know his voice. That, that's, that's all the, the characteristics of a good shepherd. He says, I'm the resurrection and the life. Not long ago, we celebrated Easter. This is where he, he, he sacrificed himself. He gave himself up. But three days later, we celebrate because he was resurrected. Maybe you feel like there's some things in your life that are dead. Maybe some relationships, specifically maybe with your parents. And you need those things to be raised to life again. Allow Jesus to work in that. He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's not just any way. He's the way. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And one of the other ones, he says, I'm the true vine. Stay connected to him. All of those I am statements just show what a powerful man Jesus was. But also fully man, fully God. The fourth thing, he sacrificed himself. As I mentioned, this is probably one of the most difficult scriptures to read because if you understand the importance behind it, we can understand it was necessary, but it doesn't make it easier, right? Sacrifice isn't meant to be easy. Look at this, Luke 23, verse 33 to 34. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, one on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. So much power in that one scripture that even while Jesus was hanging on the cross, he was still forgiving. He was still caring. The same people that crucified him are the same people that he was dying for. Have you ever thought about that? I wonder with our enemies, do we hold grudges? When a friend maybe spreads a room or something, do we hold it against them? Or do we forgive as easily as Jesus does? Remember, sacrifice is not meant to be easy. Do we sacrifice time, talent, and treasure for God? Do we get involved in serving and loving on people and forgiving people? Do we get involved and become contributors as we speak about so often? Not just consume and take, 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 but also contribute, take part, right? It's not about taking, it's taking part. Let's, let's all get involved. That's all sacrifice. Number five, the resurrection. Luke 24, verse six, he's not yet, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. You see, yes, he was sacrificed himself and he was crucified. But three days later, he rose again. That's what we celebrate. And our whole entire faith hinges on that. Because because of that, we're able to do this today. Because of that, we're able to speak like we do today. Because of that decision, we're able to have that relationship. And lastly, not many, many people speak about this, but this is known as the ascension. Because in case you haven't noticed, Jesus isn't around anymore. This is the Holy Spirit. Jesus ascended back to heaven. Luke 24, verse 51 to 53. While he was blessing them. Have you ever thought about that, by the way? That after Jesus was, was uh, crucified and he rose again, that he, 500 different people saw him. Not all people that believed in him, but they saw him. There were 500 witnesses. How, can you imagine that? Imagine, like, that's crazy. But anyway. Luke 24, 51, 53. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. So incredible that he was with them. He blessed them. He prayed for them. He said, listen, you're not done yet. You're going to do incredible things. I've been here. I've showed you how to, how to live. I've showed you the things. I'm not leaving you. I'm going, but the Holy Spirit is with you. So every time we pray, don't forget to pray to the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, I know you're in this room with me. I know you're in my heart. I know you're in my life. It's those prompts you feel. When you feel you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, doing the wrong thing, it's those prompts. That's all the Holy Spirit working in you. Maybe right now, while you're watching this, you feel like some changes, maybe some tingling. That's the Holy Spirit prompting you. That's the life of Jesus. Now, like I said, we don't need to be perfect. We don't need to have it all together. Perhaps sometimes you, you have made some mistakes in your past. Maybe even right now you're doing something you know you shouldn't. Well, you don't need to have it all together to have this incredible relationship with Jesus. Can I encourage you that 
Jesus loves you already. He's already chosen you. He created you. He's not surprised when you make mistakes. He knows already, but He wants what's best for you. That's why we want to be more like Jesus. How do we do that? Model Jesus, teach others to do the same. Forgive, love, grace, all of those incredible things. When we, when we wrap our heads around that and we won't fully understand it, but if we can just get a little bit better every day, if today I can be better than yesterday, that's a good day. If this year I can be better than last year, that's a good year. Let's keep pressing into Him. And perhaps you've never made a, a choice, a decision to follow Jesus. So how can I be more like Jesus if I'm not following Jesus? Can I encourage you to make the decision right now? You don't need to wait to ask permission. It's you and Jesus right now. Maybe you're watching this in your room or even in the bathroom, wherever you're watching this. Choose to follow Jesus. Remember, He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one gets to the Father except through, through me. That means that if we want to spend eternity in heaven with God celebrating, we choose now. And that's the beginning of a beautiful journey. So if you've never made the decision, how do you do that? It's called prayer. Prayer is a conversation with Jesus. Just talk to Him, just as you would a friend or a father. Jesus, I'm sorry for what I've done. Please come into my life right now. Forgive me for my mistakes. In Jesus' name, amen. Simple as that. And something will start to change. Maybe for some of you, you've made that commitment, but drifted away slightly. And you want to be more like Jesus and you need to recommit your life. Make that decision now. Same prayer. Lord, I know I loved you before and I drifted away from you. Please come back into my life. Hey, I'd love the great honor of just praying with you. Why? Wherever you are, why don't you close your eyes for a second or if you feel comfortable, just lift up your hand. Father, thank you for every person who's chosen to follow you and every person that's recommitted their life to you. Pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you, you would fill them, that your presence would be overflowing and overwhelming in their life, that even right now as I pray, they'll start to feel a change and a difference. We pray that you'd strengthen them, give them energy, give them the forgiveness they need. And that from this moment forth, their life will be different because of you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, congratulations. Well done for every one of you that have made that decision. Can we encourage you to connect with us? Remember, this is the beginning of a beautiful journey. It's the start. It's a, it's a starting place of something new, something different. Our vision this year, something new, right? So let's do something new. Let's go on this journey together. Let us know on WhatsApp, 82 736 9668. Let us know if you made that decision to follow Jesus. We'd love to connect with you, help you with your next steps. Or if you're already connected in a group, why don't you chat to your family and say, listen, I made this decision. I said this prayer. What do I do now? And if that's you, just let us know. Let your leader know. We'll connect with you. I hope this was helpful. Listen, don't miss the other parts. This is the beginning. This is the framework of being more like Jesus. And let's keep being more like Jesus. Remember, each week, each one, reach one. We want to reach 1,000 teenagers in fan groups. Keep connecting. Keep inviting. Keep growing more like Jesus. But we will see you next time.